Now that we've taken a look at the basics of if statements and loops, let's go ahead and take a look at an example that uses everything we've learned thus far. Using the for built-in function, create a function whose input is two vectors of equal length a and b. The function should check for the first element in b whose absolute value is less than the absolute value of the same element number in a. The function should then output the row number in that particular value. For example, if the inputs are the vectors a and b, then the output should be 6 and negative 0 0.03. If the vectors are not the same length, output an error message. If none of the absolute values of b are less than the absolute value of a at the same element number, output an a. And then it tells us to repeat the problem using the while built-in function. All right, so let's get started with our for loop. We need to define our function name, and we want to input a and b. Our code will be multiple lines, so it's a good idea to have this parentheses. Now let's take a look at the two errors that we have to output. The first one says that we need a message if the vector lengths are not equal. And the second one says we need to output NA if no values of B meet the criteria. So right off the bat, we can take care of the first error message. That's because if the vector lengths are not equal, then we can output an error message right away and the function won't need to evaluate B. So we can do that by using if the length of a is equal to the length of b, then we need to check b. Otherwise, we need to output our error message, vectors must be equal length. All right, now for actually checking B, we'll use a for loop. We'll need an increment I to check the elements or vector. And then we want to keep going so long as I is less than or equal to the length of A. And also, so long as we haven't found a value of B of I, that meets a criteria. So absolute value of b of i is greater than or equal to the absolute value of a of i. And then we want to increase i by each iteration. Now we need our if statement that will either give us n a or i and b of i. In order to determine the condition of our if statement, let's go ahead and take our, a look at our for loop. So there's two ways that our for loop can stop. Our for loop stops when we have a value b of i that meets our criteria, and it can also stop when i is greater than the length of a. We know that the only way that i can be greater than the length of a is if i keeps increasing and we don't make this condition false. So that means when i is greater than the length of a, we want to output an a. But if i isn't greater than the length of a, then that means this triggered the for loop to stop and we need to output i and b of i. Now let's test that with the vectors we were given earlier. Let's copy and paste. Suppress these with semicolons. And then one of A and B. Shift enter. And we see that we get the same answer as the example gave us. Now let's take a look at using 
y loops. We'll need our function name and the same inputs. All right, before we set up our while loop, let's take a look at the purpose of our for loop in the previous function. Essentially, the purpose of the for loop was to tell us whether or not there was a value of b of i that met our criteria. If there was, then this condition would have forced the for loop to stop. But if there wasn't, then i would exceed the length of a, and this would force the for loop to stop. So essentially, our while loop will serve the same purpose. The difference is that the while loop doesn't have a starting increment like the for loop does, so we just need to define that outside of the loop. We'll copy and paste this segment because our function will be essentially the same. Now we'll switch this for loop for a while loop. And we know that we need to set our increment i equals 1 outside of the while loop. Now we need to stop at the same criteria when i is less than or equal to the length of a, or when abs b of i is greater than or equal to abs a of i. And then we want to increase i on each iteration. Now let's test this out. Fun 2 of a and b, shift enter, and we see that we get the same result. Now let's test some vectors that give us either one of the errors. So let's say we have a vector that has a length greater than a. So we'll need a vector. That's 10 elements long. Now let's test that with each of our functions. And we get the error that the vectors must be equal. All right, now let's try to get the other error. Shift enter. Oh. Let's take this out. Shift enter again. And we got the error NA. All right. So that's it for this tutorial. We went over if statements and both for and while loops. And we went over an example that uses the three.